All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. Today, we're going to go over, um, as part of Watercolor Month, we're going to go over the watercolors. So kind of have two, two sections. I'm going to go over what a watercolor is, um, some facts about it, etc. And then I've asked um, as many artists, um, Gabriel, Angela, You're on mute, John. You're mute. Um, let me, let me click. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'll start again. Okay, welcome to Thursday. Thank you for joining today. Today we're gonna to be going over watercolors as part of Watercolor Month. Um, it's gonna be two different pieces. I'm gonna go over what a watercolor ground is and is not, um, some general facts about it. Then I've asked um, several artists, Giovanni, Gabriel, Angela, Karen Devil from Australia, Angela to go over um, and Elisa, what they've done with the watercolor ground. So you see different aspects of how it's used by artists. And during that process, please ask questions. And Mark, I don't know if you're gonna show anything, but ask questions. Questions are always good. There's no, there's only better questions. So ask away. All right, I'm gonna flip my camera so you can see what I'm looking at here. There we go. Okay. So Daniel Smith watercolor ground. And this is a watercolor ground right here. They come in um, four ounces, which is 100, 118 mil. Um, and for some, some colors, for example, the black, Mars black comes in four ounce and also comes in 16 ounce, which is 473 mil of titanium, the same thing, four ounce and 16 ounce, and same thing for titanium white. Okay, so with that, so what is a watercolor ground? Daniel Smith watercolor ground is a modified acrylic ground that acts as a paintable surface for watercolors. We like to say that no safe, it, no surface is safe with Daniel Smith watercolor ground, meaning that you can paint on just about anything. And you're gonna see some examples of this in a moment. Um, and after 24 hours of drying time, you have a paintable surface for watercolors. This means you can put it on glass, wood, plastic, metal, even fabric, although washing the fabric is not recommended once you do that. Much like a watercolor paper, the watercolor um, goes into the watercolor ground about 50%, and then it stays on top about 50%. And what that does, it ends up giving you maximum reflection and refraction and maximum vibrancy. So that's what a watercolor, this is a watercolor paper right here, and that's what the sizing does. If you didn't have sizing, the watercolor would be all absorbed in the paper and it'd be very dull. Sizing allows some of the paint with the Arabic to stay on top and stick, and some of it to go into the paper and adhere. Same thing the watercolor ground does. So it's not an absorbent ground. What, is it, what isn't it? It is not a, an absorbent ground, um, and it's not a gesso. Absorbent ground would be very dull, and a gesso would have your paint just come right off the surface and not adhere. So how much area will a Daniel Smith watercolor ground cover? So a bottle like this, 118 mil or four ounces, this will cover 10 square feet at about two millimeters of thickness. Two millimeters of thickness is the size of a US nickel. Okay, so it'll do 10 square feet. For those of you in Europe using uh, metric, that's about one square meter. So if you look at a 22 by 30 piece of paper, which is about 4.5 square feet, one of these little bottles will cover the entire surface of two sheets of watercolor paper. I'm asked quite a bit, well, do I wanna put this on watercolor paper? No, watercolor paper already has sizing on it, so you'd be wasting your money. If you wanted, however, to fix maybe a mistake or you had a change of mind, you could use, for example, that titanium white or the buff titanium to go over an area and then wait, and then you could actually paint over it. 
So it's, it's almost like a whiteout for the artist, if you will. Pearlescent white, iridescent gold, pearlescent white, pearlescent white, iridescent gold, and transparent um, will cover about seven square feet or about one and a half sheets of watercolor paper, if you will. Can I use a heat? Can I use a hairdryer or heat gun to speed up the drying process? Um, while you can, it's not recommended to do that. Um, acrylics, and this is, an, this is a modified acrylic to be, to be water permeable. Acrylics use a coalescing agent. And if you evaporate the coalescing agent too quickly, then the, then the um, acrylic spheres and the coalescing agents don't come together. And that's what causes the really tight bond. If you get rid of the water too fast, you get rid of that. And that can mess up the watercolor film. As an artist, you can do whatever you like. That's one of the neat things about being an artist is the creative process. Um, not saying you can't do it, just recommend that you not do it, that you give it the 24 hours to cure it normally. How and by what process do watercolors, oils, and acrylics dry? Oils dry by oxidation. There's a polymerization of the oxidation of the linseed oil, which makes it longer. A great example of that is stand oil. If you've ever wondered, stand oil is polymerized linseed oil. Next is watercolors. This is the easiest one to understand. Watercolors dry by evaporation. Um, the issue with using a hair dryer for that process is you can get rid of the water too fast and then what's left is going to be absorbed into the paper and that can dull your painting. So it's, it's, you can always, I mean, it's, it's a recommendation. You can always, you always make the choice. Acrylics, kind of what we talked about before, you have polymers and you have a coalescing agent in water. If you get rid of water too quickly, you don't allow that coalescing agent to come together and really form a really, really strong bond. Okay, so those are kind of fun facts. Um, we have the Mars black. So Mars black is lunar black. Focus that. Yeah. Mars black is lunar black. Same thing. We have the transparent. Transparent doesn't mean as clear as glass. You would see a little bit of a whitish um, with the transparent, uh, but you can see through it. So it is transparent. You could put it over paper, you could read every single word. Um, you put it over an image, you can absolutely see the image. The gold, and I think uh, maybe Carolyn will have an example of this, if not somebody else. In fact, I have an example of it too. Um, the gold is really, uh, it's an iridescent. It's really, really beautiful, really beautiful. And then the uh, pearlescent. Let me show you what mine looks like and then we'll go to everybody else. This is the pearlescent. So you can see the shimmer. This is over a, a, a two by six. This is the Mars black. This is the Mars black. I just took a, um, a stick of iridescent uh, electric blue and dotted it and did some, some playing with it. This is the iridescent gold, same thing. I took a stick and made some designs into it. So it's, it's, a, it's a really nice way to play. And uh, as you'll see examples, it's an it's a, it's a, uh, interesting way to have fun. Um, with the ground, Anything that is, when you put the ground down, anything on top of it is archival. It doesn't make what's below it. I mean, wood, wood and paper, et cetera, have lignin. It's not going to make this where it doesn't have lignin. It, it, this, the wood is what it is. However, when you put it on top, anything that then you put on top of the watercolor ground, this is an archival surface. All right. So, John, yes. you, say, you say the um, Mars black is lunar black. 
Yes, know, my it favorite is. my favorite part of Lunar Black is the um, how it disperses. Uh, yes, it's it's um, like it all those little particles. Um, I'm, the only time I've ever used the black ground is on paper. Does it take a lot more to cover? Um, no, it, it's going to do this. It'll it'll do the same as the um, titanium white or the buff. So you know, one four ounce bottle. Okay. I have to do it this way now. One four ounce bottle will do ten square feet. Um, the reason that this doesn't disperse is because it's within a um, acrylic polymer. The same rationale would be uh, the lunar black within the oil. You wouldn't find it dispersing because it would be within a linseed matrix. But when it's within watercolor, it will. That's the real beauty about watercolors. If you really want to see what a pigment looks like, the best way to see it is with a watercolor. I've had many acrylic artists and watercolor, um, acrylic artists and oil color artists come to my presentations because they really wanted to see the drawdowns to see what the pigment really looked like. And uh, nothing is nothing is better than that as watercolor. It's 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 top at doing that. John, yes. Um, with it being an acrylic, would you recommend that you would use a, a brush for applying it that is more acrylic based? Um, that's yeah, that's a really good question. I would use either a, a foam brush or yes, an acrylic, you know, like even, a, a, um, and I think some of the artists will show you a paintbrush that you could buy at the store. Elise is holding up a roller. A roller would work. So I would not, I would not use any of your watercolor brushes. Yeah. Makes sense that as an acrylic. So it's a much rougher. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an acrylic modified, it's a modified polymer, yes. But I would still use, you don't have to use a really good brush to put it down. The neat thing, what Elisa was showing, or you can use a sponge. So um, if you wanted to give it surface, for example, you wanted a really toothy surface, you can get a sponge and, and lift it up and down and really put some really awesome surface into your ground. If you want it to be smooth, you could use the roller like Elisa had there, and you can just make it so, so, so very smooth. And Giovanni will show you his. Because uh, it's just it's it's just it's just perfect. Yeah. So with that, and I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to just um, I'd like to start with. How about we start with Carolyn and then Giovanni? We go with you next, and we we'll do a round robin of all of you. Okay. So we're going to start with um, Carolyn. Hi. Hello, Carolyn. I've got lots to show you, but we'll just do one step at a time. You were just talking about um, putting on um, the ground with a thicker surface. Can you see the texture that I've put on this card? I can when you do that. Yep. Yeah. So I'm trying yep. to get you no know, shadow oh, across yeah. that. There we go. Now, now so I see these are just sample cards that I use when I do demonstrations of this product. And I've got a, um, a rough surface and I've let it dry quite thick. So you can put a texture into your watercolor painting. And that's just on a paper. So, but you could obviously use this same method on many other surfaces. Um, you could also choose to, on a surface, put um, the ground only in places so that your watercolor painting is broken up across the surface. You don't have to actually fill the whole surface. So if this was on a metal or something like that, or on a glass, if I then did a painting over it, the, the watercolor would only adhere to the ground area and where it would be glass, there would be nothing. So you could choose to have a, a broken image um, by putting it down that way. Um, but you can see my, my um, desk here. I've, put some watercolor ground, it's the gold. So it's um, the watercolor ground in gold, iridescent gold. And I've painted it onto um, a canvas sample. And I've now just used the watercolor sticks and drawn these birds with the watercolor sticks straight onto the canvas. So they're still wet. I just did them a few minutes ago. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the big trick here is that it, they actually take a lot longer to dry than a watercolour paper. So your patience for allowing your layering to dry. And also when you're glazing, the colours lift easier. So you have to be very careful when you're glazing with your colours that you don't lift the colour underneath um, as you're painting. But there's lots of ways to use this. Um, I've got this sample here. Um, okay, so if I get this in the right spot down here. So the background of this paper is actually sun dyed papers with a solar dye. So I started out with this interesting mark. So it was a blue and white paper. And then I was able to use my watercolors just to paint my picture and detailing. But where I wanted to block in a new section and recover a section of my blue paper, I've used the gold iridescent brown to actually um, reclaim some of the blue paper again, which I've then been able to lay over some gold foiling into that. So it's got many layers of watercolour, of dyes, of um, the foils, but also the ground in a painting. So the ground has been used as a painting um, colour as such, as opposed to being a underpainting surface. Quite interesting. Um, I've done that recently with other things. Um, something that's really unique that I've been playing with, which might um, come of interest to people. Can you see my little leaf that's sticking up there? Yes. So there's a product that's called um, cold porcelain. And you make it yourself with, um, with PV, PVA glue and um, flour. And so you, you turn it into a paste and it's a moldable paste. So I made this leaf out of moldable paste and then I painted it with the, um, with the white ground and then I can paint a watercolor painting on the three dimensional leaf, which is on the paper. So it's really different for those people that sort of want to get into actually making more 3D in their artwork, that the ground can you know, extend their watercolor. So watercolor painting up here and then it's extended into a three-dimensional component on my actual paper. That's so it's, that's really different to do something like that. Um, so in respect to the grounds, I always have a sample set of all the colors. So I can think about what's gonna suit. That's the, um, the pearl, which has got a lovely shimmer to it. The gold, of course, which is almost like velvet and the Mars Black, which is very flat, very matte. So it's a nice surface to paint on. Um, I've used the black a lot in my series of, um, a, of white um, flowers. I'll grab one of those pictures and I'll show you. So, you see that? <laughs> so this is a canvas in a cradled frame, which you can buy as a set, the canvas in the frame. And it is the canvas has been covered in the black ground and then a watercolor and gouache painting put on the top. But you can see I've left the black ground exposed actually as a part of the actual artwork in this painting. It makes it quite interesting to um, use the black as a, as a component rather than just the surface. That's cool. Quite, quite interesting, quite fun. And then I'll show you a pearl. These artworks are a bit big for this surface here. <laughs> so this is, I think it's upside down for you guys, isn't it? It is. I'm sorry. I tried to adjust it and I don't think I got it. Maybe I can try and spin it, but I'm worried I'm going to lose it if I do that. So I'll, I'll try and spin it when it's not my turn. 
Um, this is a pearl and it shimmers a bit, but not as much as I thought once I had the um, actual watercolor on. But in the right light, that lovely shimmer comes through the actual artwork. And this is watercolor ground painted straight onto a perspex. Um, so I've painted a square. I had it blocked in with the with the perspex plastic. You know, I have like a um, a paper cover on the perspex when you get it. I've scored the center and torn it out and created a um, a ground square. Let it dry for twenty four hours or more, and then painted my painting on top of that. And this one isn't yet sealed, but when I seal it, I probably will use a wax polish or a matte varnish spray to seal this. And it's interesting, you can just use so many surfaces. Um, the other thing I've been playing with is um, finding um, op shop little vessels that are really ugly and dated, you know, because they're sort of from the 70s or 80s or 90s and maybe that's your thing. But if you find the like, like the shape of the vessel, but you don't like what it is, I've put the watercolor ground on the vessel and painted watercolor over that. So that makes it really easy to um, sort of make something new of a vessel, which is really fun. There's a couple of them. There's another one. Let's see if we can get this one to, and it's a, so the watercolor um, is ground is literally the base of this vessel. But I also made a choice to use black ground and white ground as the base. So I was able to paint that on and be particular with that and then paint the watercolor painting over where I wanted that. So I had control of, um, of the detail beyond that initial surface coloring. So would you like to see more or we pass it along to somebody else? I will come back. How's that, Carolyn? That that was beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. That's okay. No problem. Okay. okay. Be right back. I'll try to adjust my vision. Okay. Giovanni, would you like to show yours? Yeah. I, okay. I prepare little tips for the uh, use the, the watercolor gown on boots. Um, for example, I showed my a little piece of wood and show the the thickness is a three three layer and um, one layer to a layer is uh, I prefer the um, sanding the with the, the sanding paper or the um, uh, timber um, paper for the the best result. I prepared these tips because I use the um, titanium white for the pastel tone and uh, I tinted the um, titanium white with the sticks, a little dropper. For more fluidity, the watercolor ground is maximum 10% of water diluted. Uh, that's what we call this. And a little bit of drop water and create my pastel tone with titanium white and apply my bookcase. Okay, and the, the different mode, if you want, I use the transparent ground for showing the um, the boot surface. It's similar. So, I mean, In this case, I don't use the, the water, drop of water, take it immediately. And uh, we have the beautiful surface tinted. Mm -hmm. 
This is a beautiful tools for for these. Okay. Show the difference. And then for decoration, my my book wood box, for example, I use, I use the Mars black, I use the pastel mode with titanium white in various color. It's a beautiful example. Or use the transparent, not tint, but only with the, the bright, the, the box and the gold inside. Or the, use the, the sponge. I remember John for create the, um, the surface, the, the, the texture. The, um, in Italy, it's called the orange uh, skin surface. <laughs> create for the sea sponge in various mode, or decorating in, in a fine mode, in titanium white. And I use my little brush for decorating in a various mode. This is a simple for tips, but it's very, very interesting. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanni. You are so beautiful. I like this one <coughs> transparent you did right now. Yeah. So nice. All of them very nice, but this one really got me inspired for some new artworks. This one in the wood. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I don't think many people would know that you could um, actually tint. So that's awesome. That you can actually tint the transparent. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I love the grain as best. Yeah, because it, it is a perfect for, um, for example, for uh, use the um, the the um, white the white wood or the the, the light wood. Uh, but it is interesting or another wood for the, um, the with the, the the dark tone. The transparent is a uh, very very interesting for the uh, these things. Thank you, Giovanni. Record. And Elisa, look, so as we talk about size, can you show everybody your painting? Great. And Elisa, is that on, is that on paper? Is that on canvas? Uh, this is on canvas. Okay. I can't, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure oh, if it's upside down or this way. <laughs> Looks good. That's really good. Very nice. Very good. Yeah, it's very nice. And so, like Caroline had mentioned, it's hard to tell here, and I can't really get it close to the camera. But <clears throat> let's see if I can do this. There is some texture. I brushed on a little bit thickly in certain areas, like where I want the flowers to be. So I kind of just painted over that. It's kind of like, as long as I first applied an even layer of the ground and I went back and as if I were painting, put where I want that little texture of flowers to be. And then I painted over it. Awesome. Yeah, I can see the texture. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and how did you apply your texture? Just with a brush or? For that, I used a little spatula. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Did it, did it take longer for it to dry um, with the spatula? Um, a little. I mean, I gave it, when I did it, I put it on and then I left it for about four days just to give it extra time. And I, and then by then it was already dry. Um, but I think what, I, what I've what i learned is that I actually, well, this card was something like this. This was like planned ahead of time. So I had to leave, give it a few more days to dry. But typically I will prepare all my canvases with at least those, I do three layers of ground, the even layers. So I have, I do a batch process. I'd spend an entire day doing them leave them and so you know 
when inspiration strikes, I can just pick one up and start painting. I don't have to wait and like, <laughs> I wish I had prepared it, but it's all ready to go. So yeah, I just, yeah, it's fun. I love it. I like, it's a different, it's a different feel when you paint on it, the ground. It's like, I have all these candles. Oh, this is like this one, <laughs> this one. I'm so um, glad I asked the question. Well, I think this last week, I even did this one during the live. Yep. I'm not sure. Is it this way or is it, I'm not sure. I don't have a direction for a lot of these paintings. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> and Gabriel, could you show us yours? Yeah. Please. Yeah, for sure. Um, so here's a plein air painting that um, I did. And it something just happens when you're out there and this piece just blew off and it got completely thrashed. So what I did was um, I put this under the shower um, and I got off uh, the stuff that kind of just ruined my painting. And so if it looks really hazy, it's because it is. And so what I did was I took the transparent um, ground and I gave it a nice cover because this type of company, the sizing isn't in the paper. It's just on that one surface. And so as you can see now, I'm starting to apply uh, my pyro red from the sticks. And you can start to see it's just acting just like watercolor paper. It's starting to even granulate. Um, I also brought um, the brush I use to put it on and that's this brush. So this brush is just specifically for putting on my grounds and my transparents, blacks, whichever. Um, another fun thing um, that you can do is you got a lot of those paintings that you might have learned from a workshop, or maybe you wanted to learn how to paint someone else's painting that's already passed away, and now I can do a whole nother painting here. Um, and this is something else I like to do. I like to do these sketches. So I have a Native American background and I like to do these sketches. And then when I get one that I like, I will put the transparent watercolor ground down and you can start to see the nice texture where I can make it look like wind or I can make this look like grass. So this went from my sketch to covering with the ground and to then painting it with the watercolor. And you can see this process on my Instagram. And just to show you one more um, that is just like that. This is uh, like a door knocker um, that was early in the morning. Again, I did my sketch just as a pencil sketch, covered it with the watercolor ground, and then I painted on it. And that's because that's sketch paper. So for instance, like this paper is like 90 pound paper. It's meant for drawing. And so I can put down the watercolor ground. And in this case for fun, when I got all the grounds, I made this fun little kind of paint out like this. And I did these black. Then I did all the duochromes that I'm thinking about using. And then I did another white and some other colors. I was trying to decide for my dot card. And then here we are. Here's just a regular ground. But I love always doing these little sketches. I think I've done a couple here on our lives. And then I had this leftover piece and I took that today while I was out plein air painting. 
And uh, again, I'm just building up the space and I'm just seeing how this monochromatic painting will look on these different colored grounds. And so I really, I really enjoy the grounds. I'm pretty much at the stage where I allow myself to just play. And so for instance, like when I did this uh, painting today, I just had an extra five minutes to go ahead and do something like this. And so, but yeah, just, just pick up, you know, two or three uh, grounds and um, give it a go. That's awesome, Gabriel. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And Angela, could you show us yours? Yes. Uh, I, I, I am in the process of correcting a painting that was not successful. So I put some white ground on it and I, I have started painting and I will continue to do a little bit more. But uh, let me show you a few things that I've done with a watercolor ground. That was with my uh, granddaughter. Uh, we painted this with the watercolor ground that was golden watercolor ground and then with the sticks and today I put a layer of um, like um, uh, a spray a spray to to protect it and give it a little bit of shine I think it's not um, dry yet then I did this bottle it's it's a glass bottle so you can paint uh, glass bottles it doesn't look anywhere as nice as Caroline's but uh, just uh, to show that you can do many things with your grounds. And I think if you put some of this uh, um, spray finishing varnish, then it will, it will shine a little bit. And also I did a test with this clay. Can you see the clay? This is uh, some clay pot, you see. It works perfectly well, plastic, everything. So I will continue now to, uh, to, to do a little bit on my flower. And you'll see that uh, the effect of the, of the ground uh, will turn this into a totally new surface. So if I want to, if I want to have more water, I can have more water. Uh, it will diffuse perfectly. Here there was something that I didn't like so. Here there wasn't any ground, but here there is. So what shall I try here? Maybe with this color. You see, it there is, is a so part nice, of your painting. Sorry? It's so nice. Even if by mistake we do something, we can cover that and then we can apply something else. So yes. Beautiful. Because um, it can be a mixture, you know? A, yeah, yeah. And it, it looks like well, half, half is direct watercolor and half is not. But uh, for me, it looks nice. I don't know if it's, um, if you can see it on the camera, but here's like um, pure watercolor. It then had never been anything. Let me put a different color here. And here, this uh, at the bottom, I didn't like what there was, so. I can wet it. And this is the beautiful color that granulates so much. What is it called? It's the hematite burn scarlet. I love it. I love so the hematites, so nice. Yeah, it will granulate again.
So that's my experiment today. I think that the ground gives you so many possibilities. And here I painted um, half of the sheet of paper. It this is paper. Normally I will not do it on paper, but you can do lots of um, experiments. This is half in um, Mars black watercolor ground and this and the other one is um, golden and I just uh, painted some leaves <laughs> you know in the garden there were some dead leaves so I painted them I know they are not a cargo or anything but just to play a little bit this one has some golden uh, watercolor ground the, the the golden and this one as well I've stuck them on the page and I paint around them so if I put a varnish on them maybe they will stay so that's a nice experiment too. So that's Angela. it. For me. <laughs> nice, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Angela. Ian, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about uh, once it's applied at the ground and the you then paint on the surface, does it after it's dried, uh, yeah. is it liftable or is it like an acrylic in the sense that you can't lift it? You can lift it, you can wash it off, you can start again, it's fantastic. Right. But how do you lift it? In, on plastic it's easier, but on paper, I don't know if you can lift it on paper. Yeah, you can't lift the watercolour ground back off, but you can clean the um, painting and remove it and go back to original watercolour ground. Right. Wow. That's very much different to acrylic then, isn't it? Yeah. Very much because you, you have the watercolour is unstable until you seal it, but the ground mm -hmm. is completely fixed and stable. Exactly. So you've got yeah. the chance to redo and redo your work uh, as much as you like. Um, you can lift just a small section with a brush or on one case, I took the whole sheet of Perspex to my kitchen sink and washed the whole painting off and scrubbed okay. the watercolour ground till it was clean again and started again. Well, yeah. thank you. You're the master of experimentation, Caroline. <laughs> I love experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Angela. That's, that's actually very vibrant. Thank um, you. Let's go back to Carolyn for, uh, since we're going to jump around, but let's go back to you, Carolyn. I'm not upside down this time. How about that? You're yeah, perfect, gonna... the perfect center. Just Excellent. your so, pub cam. Here you go. There you go. Are we, okay, so I pulled out a, um, uh, a couple of more samples that I'd done where I've tinted the watercolor ground with a little bit of um, pigments or with um, watercolor colors. So Quinn, Quinn Red with the titanium white ground and I get this fantastic pink mm. ground base. So that can be the base of an artwork, which makes it really interesting to um, start with a color and how different that would be. Um, this particular one has been painted with Australian um, olive green and gold. Um, it's just like, I don't know, it's like satin. This amazing green, but it's got all the beautiful, um, all the beautiful micas from the, um, the, the, um, the iridescent gold ground in it. And so you Sorry, end up Caroline, with- what, where, what is the green? I've added um, uh, Australian green gold to, oh, okay. the, uh, to the watercolor ground to tint it and you end up with this fantastic, like I said, it's like silk, it's like shop silk. You imagine painting somebody's beautiful garment, you know, somebody's lovely um, dress or suit or something first in this ground and then decorating it with um, with the watercolor, you know, the, whether it's be the, um, the layers of shadows and light or whether it's a lace layer or, you know, something really interesting because you've actually got the fabric um, with the, I suppose, the texture of fabric on the page um, as you start. 
And you can use mix it also with, um, I've used pure pigments where I've crushed the pigment and I've mulled them in with the white ground. So it's a very flat and matte surface, um, no shininess, but it gives me a tonal color to start with. So these are just samples, um, but they're good to know that you can be a little bit more like an oil painter and start with a colored surface and, and go ahead from a colored surface. Um, I pulled another one out to show you. See how it's shiny? <laughs> That's yeah. because it has a polyurethane pore, but this is a, a cradled board and a watercolor ground surface. And these are Primatex, all different Primatex uh, was the painting. So I've got the lovely granulation qualities and, and um, really interesting, um, I suppose, watery marks, but lovely, lovely um, cells um, with the granulation coming through. And when the painting was finished and dry, then I put a light varnish spray to, to um, stabilize it and then did a two pack polyurethane pour over the surface. So you end up with this wonderful artwork that is completely sealed inside, almost like a, you know, 70 layers of, of acrylic um, varnish, but you do it in one pour. It's pretty cool. And we have to go back to vessels because when I get bored, I cook and I do crazy, crazy things and it's limoncello season. So I have this lovely selection of limoncello bottles and I've got them all labeled with the clear watercolor ground and a painting to label my bottle. And then I've actually sealed that with a, um, a clear Mod Podge um, sealant so that I can take the bottle to the sink and give it a good scrub and clean when the, when the bottle's empty. Um, which is important if you're going to use vessels um, with culinary things um, that you're able to wash the bottle properly. Caroline, so that's it. yeah. Um, have you ever used it to do any screen printing onto surfaces that would normally bounce water? Okay, I haven't, but I have used stencils so that your stencil watercolor ground only where you want it yeah and i can't show you because things like that i do and they sell so quickly and i uh -huh. never end up with any samples left here right yeah that would be a very interesting thing to do because you can paint quite specifically on the areas that yes th that you've laid it down on yes so i mean the idea of silk screen printing is a bit like stenciling where you're using yeah. a block out on the screen um, I think the paste itself, the watercolour ground might be too heavy to go through a screen, a silk screen, mm -hmm. because silk screen ink is a lot finer and mm -hmm. there's a lot of, gra a lot of grain in a um, watercolour ground. I don't think it would go through a screen. But using just a, a regular everyday stencil, whether it's a handmade one or a purchased stencil, you could use with your grounds and you could do some interesting things with that, yes. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. John? Yes. Uh, we have Kathleen and Besnick uh, ready with awesome. their work as well. well. Perhaps we can start with Kathleen because I just saw her artwork now. Are you ready, Kathleen? Okay, there. I'm going to spotlight. Okay. Um, you're on. Okay, there. Okay, now, now. Um, this. Um, what you see is really not showing the vibrancy that I see. Um, the, um, this right here is the buff in this corner. I love grids. And so I'll lay out a grid and put the different grounds in it. This is the pearlescent, which was the most fun to paint on. And then, then gold. And then the white over here and the black, as you can see, um, in this area right here, I did a sketch and then uh, did transparent. And, um, and so I was able to, you know, have quite a bit of, uh, I'm just the opposite. So my fingers aren't going to the right places. Um, but right there, and this is, 
um, I, I believe it's carbazole violet because that's the primary uh, purple I have on my in my uh, uh, palette. And then um, thalo turquoise, uh, spring, or not spring, it's thalo yellow green. Uh, I had, it, this was one of the most fun experiments, uh, relaxing. Can you see the grapes on top of, I started using an acrylic pen to kind of show more and then I was a little bit sorry I had, but I could have covered it with the black, um, you know, if I'd, if I'd really taken the time to um, continue. I mixed some colors in here and it's just like I tell my students, wait until it's dry. Don't pass judgment on it before then. And I, I really, really loved the, the colors that it gave. And I didn't see anybody else show this, so I want to show it. It is on a very old Bible, so I may make somebody mad, and I apologize for that. But um, the transparent just does beautiful on a page. And it's true. You can read every word through there. I've even gone back in with a pen on top of um, the painting. And um, this is, you know, probably the very first one I ever did. And um, this page, I, um, there is a different feel, but I have painted the transparent on more pages. We, it just turned to another one. I actually have to feel the paper to know for sure that it has the transparent um, paint uh, or the transparent ground on it. And I, I really, really enjoy using the transparent ground um, a lot. So thank you for the opportunity to share that. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I think we also have best Nick John. Yep, yeah, sure. Best. Hello, Best. Hey, hi, hi everyone. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through my phone, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll show you one of the bigger paintings I already shown. But I will also show another uh, painting I did in one of those uh, I don't know how you call them old boxes. So I'm gonna go with my phone. It's a big one. <laughs> so speaking about painting this one i already shown but i want to show it again because it's i think it's really nice structure first layer i did it with spongy brush and then the second one i did it with knife and then i left all these structures because I really love the structure in abstract paintings and it is very uh, big <clears throat> format painting. You can see different structures around. And another thing I want to show is this box I painted wow. for one of good friends. I, let, I put white ground. It's only white ground. And it is watercolor painting on top of white ground. Is that wood, Besnik? Uh, how do you call this? A conglomerate? Particle board? MDF. Yes, MDF. Uh -huh. And uh, you see even here, I didn't apply very softly to be just with a spongy brush. I did first layer with spongy brush and then I left like this second layer, I left it like this to be visible also the brush stroke of the white ground. But color scheme so beautiful, just like in the normal high quality papers that I am using. Probably I will add some other details, but even like this, I really love it. So simple and just the painting in front of it. Watercolor ground, you can do many things. It's so, so many possibilities to do. I don't want to take much more of your time. 
and to show because other parties already shown uh, different possibilities with transfer and ground and so on. I just wanted to show these two. Awesome, thank you, Besnik. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, John. Yes. Um, as we're in a slightly mixed media environment today and we are normally focusing on watercolour, what are the possibilities of actually using acrylic on this? Would it make any uh, difference? You, you'd get no, you would, there would be no advantage to using acrylic over the watercolor ground. Um, you might as well just use whatever acrylic you want um, because this has been modified to be uh, uh, permeable to water. So there'd be, there, you could do it, but there'd be no advantage. It, it, it'd be the same thing, Ian, as putting this over watercolor paper. Watercolor paper already has sizing, it's already ready to be. Um, have watercolor applied to it. So it's it's um, just another method. What I, what I always try to think about in talking with you as artists is how can I provide you different tools that you can take whatever you're thinking about to the level you want to go to? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, like uh, Carolyn showing that she wanted to paint on um, on pots or on vessels. That's not something that was normally available to watercolor artists. It, certainly for oil colorists and acrylic artists, they could do that, but not watercolors. And with this tool, now you can do it. You can do way more things in three dimensions, et cetera. Um, so could you paint over the top of it with acrylic? Yes, um, it wouldn't be a good use of your money, however. And just, just to project that slightly more forward, uh, how about the water soluble oils? Would that be exactly the same? So the water soluble oils are the think of the water soluble oils. They are exactly like traditional oils. They're exactly alike. They both have the linseed oil. They both have the same pigment, but it's a modified linseed which allows it to be cleaned by water. It yeah. is the only difference. Right. So stick with watercolors with this particular product then? Yeah, this one I made, we made specifically for the watercolor artist. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You guys have questions. All right, we so, have one last question. Anna, I saw Anna raised her hand. Anna Candela. Okay. Please proceed. Hi, John. Hello. Oh. Hi, how are you, everybody? I, I just loved uh, all the variety of, uh, of applications and everything. And I'm, I really am excited about this project now. And I had a question particularly for Caroline, because when she was talking about that, she just goes and wash her whole uh, thing and starts from scratch again. I was thinking of, remember those sketch thingies, you know, that the, the, the silver ones yes. that you would do? Etch a sketch. <laughs> that one. Yes. And I was thinking, you know, how many times can you, you know, because I was thinking, you know, instead of, you know, doing a lot of paper, watercolor paper, just doing exercises yes. and then just wash and then come back and wash again. How many times can you do that? You, I, can, you can keep doing it and keep doing it because it is so fixed to the surface and a really solid, um, a solid ground. You can scrub it. I scrubbed it with a sponge. It wasn't a problem. However, oh, like I've only done it? It, yeah, I've only done it oh. once. So I think okay. over time, you know, it would soil up and get little bits yeah. of the pigment in the in the crevices. Mm -hmm. So if it if it soiled up so much after so many uses, you could just put a new coat of ground on it. Yeah. So it's really, really very versatile for that sort of learning thing. Yes, and saves a lot of money on paper. There you go, another reason to to use it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's light, you know, to travel, you know, you can just, yes. you know, keep practicing and just uh, do that. You can, but you do need the 24 hour plus drying time. That's very important. Yes. So uh, you've got to prepare your surface, walk away, you know, do it early in the week. And then on the weekend, when you know you have painting time, then your surface is ready for you. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, that's okay. I've got one more surface here if you want to spotlight um, Ethel, my um, table. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So can you see this one? Yes. 
Well, it's aluminium sheet. It's really thin aluminium sheet. And I've hand embossed my window frame into, my win into the sheet of metal. And then I've claimed what would be the window, the view out the window and the wall next to the window in the watercolour ground so I can put a painting on it. So this is my experiment to see if I can actually scratch the watercolour ground back to the metal surface and actually emboss some pattern on the window frame. We'll see how we go. But Eric. just to show you that it's been drying for a week, so it's ready for me to paint now, um, but it's an experiment in embossed. You can see the metal, how it's been embossed. And then when I finished it, I could potentially wrap this piece of metal around a board or something like that and it would be a finished artwork ready to go. So the metal's quite a, um, a new, another new layer I haven't tried yet. Caroline? Yes. Um, how about if you get some tin foil and scratch a shape into it and use it almost like a jelly plate onto it? Uh, yeah, in fact, jelly plate was something I wanted to try with the sticks I haven't tried yet. Because mm. so, I've got jelly plate here. Um, you know, I work in arts education, so there's probably not a product in my studio I don't have. Um, mm. And jelly plate is a really fun one and the mm. sticks I think will be great. In respect to moving and using the watercolour ground, well, it's really about stabilising a surface that isn't normally um, okay for watercolour and you're actually introducing watercolour to far new, uh, exciting, you know, sort of vessels and surfaces and shapes and and um, areas that you would never be able to put watercolour um, normally on. Um, so jelly plates, I don't think necessary, but you could possibly think about whether you can do a monoprint, make yourself a monoprint plate from mm. the um, watercolour ground. And that's something else that I haven't tried yet, but so it'll be on my bucket list to try. Many years ago before we had uh, plastic, for printing, you know, newspapers and things like that. Yes. That's how it was done, on a, a thin sheet of uh, aluminium. Right. Uh, and it was scratched into it. Yes. So... So that's more like intaglio, I'm sort of feeling. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you. Carolyn, thank you. Giovanni, Gabriel, Angela, Elisa, all of you, all the viewers, thank you so much. I'd love to see that, Carolyn, when you finished your uh, the, that uh, last one with on the aluminum, I would absolutely yes. love to see it. I look forward. Hopefully this weekend I'll find time. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Last, last weekend I was going to paint, but we had a massive fish tank disaster. So the, the weekend was um, dealing with a massive tropical tank that um, decided to empty itself in a power failure, oh, um, which wasn't good. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you. Uh, Thanks. Thank you. Ideas. And I'll see thank you tomorrow. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Thanks, John. See you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you.